Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. We're so glad you're here. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Give people a little bit of time to come in to the webinar. I don't know if you all get Zoom slowness, but sometimes we get it takes a while for us to get into Zoom itself. <laughs> so I always like to give people a little bit of time um, to get in here and make sure that they're able to log in and all of that good stuff. But we're so glad you're here today. So glad to see um, people logging in and wanting to learn more or walk through the interim report. Very, very happy. Um, this is something, by the way, that we're going to hope to offer in the future as well, um, just as a touch point for interim reporting. And we hope that it'll be helpful, especially as new staff on board and are looking for ways to learn um, new ways to help. So I see, I think majority of the people are here. Again, I just want to welcome you to today's webinar. We're so glad to have you today and um, looking forward to walking through the interim with you. But first, we'll do a little bit of introductions. So my name is Carly Curley. My pronouns are she, her. I have a blue background with a jean sh shirt on, some red lipstick, brown hair, and glasses. Um, I'm joined today by Gabrielle matul -Worth. She's in the background here helping with your questions um, and answers. And she'll be assisting me here as we um, get through your questions. Uh, I'm the assistant director for need-based programs. So if you have written into WCG, you likely heard from me. Also, a big part of my job is the interim report. Uh, and so you've, if you have done some overrides and maybe you've heard from me like, hey, you know, we need you to work on this or it needs to be do done a different way. Um, I am the person behind that. And I'm very fortunate to work with you all and come from a financial aid office background myself. So again, welcome. And we'll go ahead and get started here. So a little bit about our agenda today. We're going to do, we did intros already. Feel like you know me, hopefully. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about file upload options. So something that we, we get a lot of questions on. So hopefully we can kind of talk about that um, and walk through that together. We're going to walk through the actual interim process together in Seesaw. Um, talk about a couple reminders and then provide some time for Q&A. And so just want to encourage you as you go throughout this, please do submit your questions. We're really happy to answer those and really hope that this is a space that's open uh, for you to do so. Uh, we will be using the Q&A function, not the chat. So the chat's been disabled, but you can um, ask any questions in the Q&A and we'll make sure to address those either as we go along or towards the end of the presentation. So don't be shy. We're happy to hear what you have to ask and and want to know want to make sure that we're addressing any questions you have. So, a little bit about file upload options. Um, this can be done in a couple different ways, and something that that you're probably used to um, in terms of how the file upload works for the interim report is probably the full file upload. And so, what this upload does is each attempt or each time you upload this file type, it it deletes any other information in Seesaw and it's gonna be like a brand new file of students every time. Now, what, what the bummer is about this is that this may mean that you're you're having to complete and do edits and, and refer to these edits multiple times throughout the year um, since each try with this upload is a brand new, <laughs> brand new set of edits to look at. Um, so all of that to say, this type of file load, it does delete any data that's in Seesaw previously, um, and it's going to put whatever is on that file that you upload in this format, um, it's going to put that into Seesaw. So it will overwrite the information. Um, and so in the past, we would say the full file is a good way to start your initial upload for the year. However, we're going to be phasing this type of file load out. Um, and don't want you to stress about that. We'll definitely provide you more information. Um, but also just a reminder that you can use the incremental file load type that we will be talking about here in a moment as a full file load. So you just put all your students on the incremental file and then it uploads the same way as the full file load would. So a little bit about this more, uh, it requires all student enrollment data and awards to be included or awards will be deleted. So very important when you're pulling your file and if your system's creating this file, 
um, if you're still using the full file load, make sure that you're putting your comprehensive student data uh, on this file uh, so that you don't miss any students. And of course, the most favorite time to figure that out is during URR time. <laughs> so we wanna make sure that you have all your students and their awards included. Um, like I said, it will overwrite any all data that's currently in the portal. And that then can re require you to readdress the edits. And so this can be a lot of time. It can take a lot of time to have to readdress the edits every time. Um, and so what can be helpful is using the incremental file upload. Um, and I'll talk about ways that that would really help you in the future. So incremental file load, something we introduced. Um, this year. And like I said, this will be something that we will be moving to. This file can be a full list of your comprehensive list of your students and all of their data. But this also functions as what we call a change only file or um, partial, stu partial student data file. So this is really important because this will save a lot of time. So imagine you have, you know, all your students uploaded into Seesaw um, at the beginning of the year or maybe during summer one if you're ahead of school and you get everything in there, well, what you can use this file type for is to only put changes to those students. So the way that that function is it functions is there's an additional column. The first column in the file layout is gonna be called is delete. So if it's just simply you need to delete a student record out of Seesaw, you put a Y in that column and that will delete the student record. You could also put changes to the students' uh, awards as well. And so that's kind of why it's a change only file if you if you utilize it in that way. So if you upload an incremental file, it won't affect any of the current student awards. So it's not going to delete anything like the full file upload would. And this is kind of function similar to the URR report or the unit record report. So for those of you that get to do both types of reporting fun, um, you might be familiar with this change only or partial student data load um, type. So just a couple of reminders about files in general, uh, $0 awards on the file equals need met. And so what this would be is if, for example, a student had a lot of you know, different funding sources, and so they just weren't eligible for say CBS um, because their need was met. You could just put a zero for that file, the, the system would read it, and then you wouldn't even get an edit for that student. So you may be familiar with having to override students that you know need was met with other grants and scholarships. If you do put the zero dollar award for students that actually truly had need met, that will save you some time with your edits. Hi, Bobby. Looks like we have a question. I don't know if I can hear you, sorry. Let's see. I think your audio is not working, but let me see if I can look at the question. Uh, why will the full file load uh, upload be phased out? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. And I'm hoping that Gabi can help me a little bit with the history of why. But I think just because the incremental file is, is a, a more efficient way for schools to only have to put partial data in, and then that way they're not having to um, overwrite the system each time, which also takes longer for the file load. So this would save time as far as uploading the file in Seesaw, but also providing an option for, you know, it, putting your comprehensive amount of students. So you'll, you'd put all of the students in the incremental file um, when you initially upload it. Um, and you could do that in the future too, if you wanted to, <laughs> it just, it would delete any other records. Um, so it kind of functions the same way but also gives more flexibility for you just to do change only options. Um, Gabby, are you able to get your audio to work? Shoot, can't hear you. Let's see. Yeah, I see you unmuting. Technical difficulties, it's part of the fun of Zoom, everyone, right? <laughs> Uh, and I know that there's there is a little um, apprehension maybe about the uh, uh, incremental file load. I think the key here to having success with implementing this is to be working with those that uh, work with your current systems to make sure that your system can generate these types of files. So, so most people they're able to generate their file in general for for their whole list of students. So I think it would be working with your system provider to make sure that they could. Um, 
find a way to prepare change only files. So that might be some of the background work that will need to be due for setup. Um, Gavi, sorry, we still can't hear you. Y'all can't I, hear me? Oh, here you are. You're here. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yes, we love technology. And this time it was not me putting myself on mute. I promise. <laughs> it was not. I swear that's true too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so Elizabeth and the rest of our favorite financial aid folks online, mm -hmm. um, the reason they are changing the file layout and we did send out notification starting late last year um, I think so. mm -hmm. to start getting people aware of it. Um, but the reason is mostly because when we use the full file load, like Carly said, it deletes everything that was in there before and it overrides with the new information. Mm -hmm. So if your new file didn't have um, some of the students on it, um, that you, you know, accidentally put, didn't put on your file, um, they'll get deleted out of the system. Mm -hmm. And, you know, remember how much fun the edits are. And like Carly said, <laughs> you get to do them over and over again. If you use the incremental file, well, when everybody uses the incremental file, they all have to redo all of their edits every time. And so that is part of the reason why Seesaw was bogging down so much mm -hmm. because it was continually having to check and recheck for edits. And so using the incremental file, since it only changes things that are different, it doesn't bog down the system as much. And so you probably have noticed over the last couple of years that hopefully you have noticed mm -hmm. that the Seesaw isn't getting as jammed up as much anymore. And um, that is largely due to the incremental file load. But again, if you like the full file load, you can just use the incremental mm -hmm. file. Um, it just has that one extra column in the front. So uh, but that that's the reason. Thanks, Gabi. Appreciate it. I knew she would have more of the history than I did. I do know as an FAA, I would experience slowness sometimes. And being on the back end here at WASAC, I've noticed uh, that it has been a lot faster, even during the times where everyone's in the interim working it. So we love that. And um, thank you for the question, Elizabeth. Really appreciate it. Um, and, okay, so just among the uh, reminders, uh, so $0 means need met. So that's how CESA is gonna read the file. But if it's blank, it means the student meet does, didn't meet eligibility. So you just want to make sure that you're not putting a zero in the case of where a student doesn't meet eligibility. You're just leaving it blank. So just a couple little file reminders. Uh, where can you find these file layouts? So there's a couple different places we put them. One of our favorite places of all time is the FAA resources page. I hope you all are utilizing this. There's some really great information out there. Um, of course, our program manuals will always be out there, um, but you can find the sample file loads here and, um, and we'll always keep those up to date on this page um, as well as other program guidance. Um, so for example, the information we sent out about summer one options for this year will be put in the program guidance section. Um, our legislative memo would be in the legislative session. And then if you have questions about residency, there's a lot of really good information on the residency page um, for you in case you're curious about something. <laughs> um, but just a couple of the resources, we also have webinars and things on there. So anything that we think would be helpful for you all, we're going to put here. Um, and it, in fact, if you have suggestions of other things that might be helpful for you as you do your work, just let us know. We'd love to hear your feedback. Other place that you're going to find this is where we're about to visit here real soon, um, which is in the portal. And when we go to Seesaw and the upload tab, so you'll see them right here in the bottom. And um, that is where you can download the templates as well. Again, we'll keep those up to date, uh, up to date if we do any changes. We'd always communicate as well if we do any changes to the file upload type so that you are aware um, but we try to keep them as the same as long as possible so that we're not, you know, <laughs> providing extra work for people as they're trying to accommodate their systems. So it is Seesaw time, which I'm so excited. We're going to actually do a full walkthrough um, going from starting the upload through submitting the report. Um, I'm also going to talk about a little bit about some features in the portal and in Seesaw that might be helpful for you as you go uh, about your work. So let me go ahead and 
switch some screens here so we can get that going. Part of the fun, the technical fun of doing everything here. Um, okay. Okay, so today we're going to be working in Magical University, um, and I, of course, am going to impersonate Unicorn Sparkle Face, the amazing FAA that works at Magical University, uh, to do this interim report. And so um, basically what I have pulled up here is just the Seesaw from the home menu. So we're going to go Seesaw. And how I look at this is I look at the tabs as a literal step-by-step -step process in completing your report, right? So we're going to start with the Upload tab. And that's where we're going to begin our interim journey. Um, but we'll move through step by step on each tab. And if, if you think about it that way, that's a great flow for you to go. And now sometimes I know, especially in the beginning of fall, when we have a lot of edits to address um, and there's a lot to do, you might be sticking in the edits page for quite a long time. But if you look at it as a step by step process, this is a great way to kind of flow through that. So first, we're going to grab our file here and we're going to see, let's see. All right. So first thing is you see here that we have a couple different file loads. And this is just a reminder to make sure you're grabbing the right file. Make sure it's the, the correct one. Normally, it's good to name your files by um, the term that you're going to be uh, uploading for. And so in this case, I'm like, oh, I don't want to upload happy you. We're magical you. So we're going to select our file. File needs to be in CSV format um, and needs to follow the layout. So I'm going to grab that. OK, yes, we'll proceed. <laughs> All right, so what you see here, and this is just a reminder to everyone, if you're going about your, your day and you're like, OK, I, I thought I uploaded my file last week. Like, what, where is it? It's oftentimes because you have not scrolled down to save the upload. Uh, this has happened to me just this week. I was like, I thought I put the file in there. Nope, I did not. So, <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and hit save upload. And what you'll see here is the progress bar as you are uploading your file. Again, um, you know, for if you have a comprehensive student file, um, regardless of the layout you're using, this is probably going to take you a little while longer than it's going to take you when you're just doing an incremental uh, partial data load. Um, but like I said, incremental file, again, can be used for all your students as well. So you don't have to use the full file load option. Okay, so we've successfully uploaded. We feel happy about that. And now we're going to address the edits. So we're gonna go into our edit screen here. So a couple things to know about edit screens is it's gonna tell you the edits that you're going to have to complete in order to submit this report. And it'll tell you any informational edits you have. It is a really good idea if you have time um, at some point, whether it be during the interim process or at another point after the interim process, to look at these informational edits. Um, some things I've found in there before uh, when I was working the interim report was I found students that were under awarded in Washington College Grant, for example. Um, they might be close to their QERs. So it's just really good information, although I recognize that time is little and we wanna make sure, um, and, and I know this is a lot to do. And so maybe just putting some time on your calendar to check the informational every once in a while um, and make sure you're checking out these students. Uh, but in terms of the, the, the edits that need to be completed in order to submit your report, they're going to be listed right here. Now, the two types you're going to see in this category are going to be those that can be overridden. So, for example, there, there's a reason behind why you awarded it as it is. It's just that it, the system doesn't recognize it as how it should be awarded. And so that's where you have an opportunity to override the edit. And we'll kind of walk through that with a couple of people here in a moment. Uh, the second type is non-overridable. So these are the type of, of uh, edits that you have to do, um, that you have to correct the data in order to move on with the report. Now, this is a moment for me to talk about the CVS is not okay to pay edit. So for those of you that are familiar with the interim report, you know for the past couple terms, we have, these are students in this category are going to be students that likely have verify in the checker but you haven't been able to collect their high school transcript or verify their high school information yet. So 
per our guidance, you've awarded them CBS um, and you've put them on accepted or whatever term your system uses to hold that award until you verify the information. And so we recognize that what the student will get when you award CBS when they're likely eligible is this CBS student is not okay to pay. So what we've said in this in this uh, for this particular situation is that these students uh, you can still submit your interim report even if they have this particular edit. So that's a very specific case. Um, and always feel free to let us know if you have questions about that. And just a teaser, we'll be providing more guidance about students in this specific situation here soon. Uh, just for purposes and training, I will let you know that, that um, these students are not gonna match with the checker because of their naming and their fake SSNs that we've had. So they're not gonna uh, match with a CBS. Um, students uh, in the checker. So so we can't walk through that example, unfortunately, but I will show you kind of what you would see uh, on the student detail record. Try to think if there's anything else I want to share with you before we start diving into the edits. I think the main thing too is that training portal is, is a huge um, tool for you. So if you are new to the financial aid game and you're wondering like how how does this all work? What is even Seesaw? This is your place, your sandbox to play in because it gets deleted every day. It's not connected to the live portal. You can try different things with awarding students. You can try different things with reporting and a bunch of different things um, to learn the system better. And some, some schools, I know that there's some FAAs that uploaded their file ahead of time in here work the edits and then somehow translate to the live portal. I mean, it can be used for a variety of things, but just an encouragement, this is here for you and um, hopefully will be helpful. I know I use it all the time <laughs> in my role. Uh, other than that, I wanted to show you in Seesaw, there's a report function here. Um, so if you're trying to find like a certain, uh, you know, a, a population of students, um, you can get different things in CSV file format. So if you're looking for your all student awards, uh, students that are dual enrolled, so students that are at another institution, say you're trying to work, pre-work your interim and get in contact with schools that you, your students are both in, uh, enrolled in, you could do, use this report to figure it out. Um, students with need met, I mean, there's just a variety of different tools here. And um, so I wanted to point that out for you to know that these are here for you uh, and could help you, at, you know, pre-do your interim or um, help as you're, as you're looking for different you know, information. Okay, so we're gonna go back to edits and we're just gonna start working on these students. So um, the first one's gonna be student is bridge grant eligible but has not been awarded. So let's take a look at our list here. I like to sort, it sorts it weird <laughs> with, with these test names, um, but I just like to have it by last name and kind of work it that way. Totally up to you what you like to do, um, but let's take a look at this first student. So we'll open this in a new tab. Let's see, test 39, a test 11. What's going on with them? So we knew they had the bridge grant edit, but if you're ever curious the edits they have, they're also gonna be here. So you can click on here and see. Okay, so this student has both the student, CBS student is not okay to pay, and CBS student is bridge grant eligible, but has not been awarded. So. The reason why we know we're getting this is because students that don't qualify for CVS but have a maximum M, uh, Washington College Grant MFI, so 65%, they qualify for bridge grant. Let's see what else we have up here. Total WCG awards for a year cannot exceed $2 a maximum. So basically by fixing this student, we could fix three edits at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you how I will do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at why does it say the CBS is not okay to pay? So when I look right here, what I would anticipate to see if a student was actually CBS eligible is it would say likely eligible for CBS or eligible for CBS. And you could link to their CB, uh, CBS eligibility checker record. Um, but here we see they're not eligible. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the edit button for this student and I'm gonna go ahead and delete the CBS records for the student. Now, just because I'm remembering, but you don't need to, you can always go back to your edits, um, but I'm also remembering they're bridge grant eligible because they're not actually CBS eligible. So I'm gonna put the 500 here. I'm a school that awards it all up front and I'm gonna award their $500. And I'm gonna click update student. All right, so we got rid 
of a lot of, of the edits. So let's see what's going on with spring. WCG award exceeds maximum eligible amount. And then we still have total WCG awards for year cannot exceed $2 of maximum. So when I look here, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't seem right. They're getting $811, even though they're under halftime and they only get 471 at, at halftime. So something's up. So if you click on the term, you're always gonna have the max award information listed here. So this is a good tool for you while you're in the student detail record. And if you click on the I, you'll kind of see how that's calculated. Um, and it's just basically been reduced based off of their enrollment. So, so now that they're under half time, we need to adjust this to 235. So we're gonna do that right here. All right, this student has been totally taken care of. We've removed the CBS eligibility. Now, the other thing to remember is on the flip side of reconciling with your own systems. So one way to flow and do this is to have, you know, Seesaw up, working the edits, and then have your, your system up as well and be adjusting the students as you go. Because the thing is, is once you resolve the edits, they're not going to show um, in the edit list anymore. So you want to make sure you remember what you've done to these students first. So my suggestion is fix in your, in your system first, then fix in Seesaw um, and move on to the next student. Because we always want to be reconciling our, our records here um, with both and with our finance office. <laughs> so, all right. So we got one student done. Let's Let's go ahead and refresh the page and see what we have left. So we had 39 edits, but we took care of eight. That's awesome. So Let's go ahead and go back into the student is bridge grant eligible, but has not been awarded. Let's look at the student that's in summer one. So this student is getting the bridge grant eligible, but has not been awarded. The WCG award exceeds maximum eligible amount, as well as the total WCG awards for year cannot exceed $2 maximum. Now, I will tell you this too. If you're ever like, hey, Carly, where do I see the information for your comments? Like say say you're working on your report and you notice that someone pops back into the edits um, and that you already overrode. Well, it could be that I'm in the background looking at your <laughs> overrides. I review all of your overrides. And so I'm looking at it and I go, oh shoot, that's not gonna work for this. And I'll put a comment in there. Where you'll see these comments is right here. It'll start having more information below this edit. Um, and you can always see our comments on an individual student um, if you're looking for it. Typically, if or not typically, we will contact you if you've already submitted your report and there's some overrides we need you to fix. I will always email you, let you know what you need to look at, what students, um, and please feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Happy to always clarify for you or help or hop on a call. Uh, we can talk about it. All right. So one thing I wanted to point about, out about this student. So say this student, you're like, you know, uh, actually, it's not that I, I awarded the wrong amount. I just, the system pulled the wrong enrollment number for this student. So that does happen from time to time. And um, that could be sometimes like, say a student actually was eligible, they've attended all classes, um, passed the first day of the quarter and all their courses, they've earned their award, but then yet at some point in the quarter or semester, they dropped below full time or half time. So you've awarded them correctly, but however, um, maybe your report pulled the enrollment wrong, then you would just update the enrollment here. Um, but for this purpose, we'll say, you know, they're less than half time, 235 was their award we will update the student. So again, you can find this information here, um, the award that they should be awarded. You can also see that the, they were anticipating that they're eligible for bridge. Well, I'm gonna pretend in this case that the student wasn't in three credits, they were in two credits um, and they weren't eligible. So let's take a look. Well, they wouldn't be really eligible for <laughs> WCG either, but let's go ahead and pretend. Um, so I'm gonna refresh this, go back into the edit, and see what the override might be for this student. So I'm gonna use student enrolled in less than three credits and I'm gonna click override for that student. And you'll see that disappears from your edit. So let's do one more here or let's kind of walk through these one more time. So we'll try this student and see what's going on. All right, so they have an edit each, each term 
they're again, not an eligible CBS student and they have not been awarded bridge. So we're gonna go in here. We're gonna delete our CBS. We're gonna add bridge. We're gonna update the student. Voila, all their edits are gone. So say, you, say you're in here, you've already looked at the student. You're like, yeah, I know they need bridge. Yeah, I know they're not CBS eligible. You can just go ahead and delete and do the exact same thing that I did in the student detail record if you know that, that information. And you can award it here just by deleting and saving. And that takes care of that edit. <laughs> I know it seems like, oh, they're not always that simple, Carly. And I know, <laughs> I know there's some that are really tricky. Um, I think one of the things that I see come up a lot is our students that had um, withdrawn after a certain point um, of the quarter, but really if they have attended at least one course for all courses they're enrolled in, remember they're still eligible um, for their full award. They've earned that full award unless you have an alternate repayment policy with us. So Good rem reminder for when you're doing that. Uh, I also think sometimes there's some confusion over um, retroactive versus late awarding. And so when we talk about late awarding, what we're talking about is say the student got awarded Washington College grant, but for some reason the CBS eligibility wasn't checked at the time or P passport, something like that wasn't checked. So the student wasn't awarded. But by the time the student was checked for that eligibility, they have withdrawn from from the course what they should that's called a late award because they should have been awarded all of their aid types at the same time so they have actually earned that award even though they have since withdrawn so that's a late award retroactive award would be if a student didn't have a financial aid application um and so they say they've gone through fall term and now it's winter term, they've submitted their FAFSA, they can go ahead and be awarded for fall term. So I, thought, I hope that's helpful as far as like distinguishing those two types. So let's see what's going on here. Total bridge grant award exceeds yearly max. Let's see what's going on with these students. All right, so I see here that Magical U and Happy Town U have both awarded the students the same amount for winter and spring quarter. So we know that there's gonna be a couple different edits at play here when this happens. Um, first, we're getting the total bridge award exceeds yearly max. Oh, oops. <laughs> and that's what happens when you try to go on another school's thing. So let's go ahead and try that again here. Uh, we have really nice messaging for you. Okay, so first thing is total bridge grant exceeds yearly max. So what we wanna figure out here is also, yeah, okay. What we wanna figure out here is, is the student enrolled at my school or are they enrolled elsewhere? So this is where some coordination has to happen between you and the other school um, to see what's going on. But say in this case, we're like, no, for sure. This student is going to our school. We've awarded them correctly. I've talked with Happy Town. They're gonna to be deleting their awards in Seesaw. So what do you do? So you're gonna go over here and you're gonna to go to the override box. And this is the option you can select. My college verified with other college that student is not enrolled or receiving Washington Bridge Grant payment there. So you can go ahead and override that and that will get rid of this edit. So before we go through the other two here, I'd like to say that this one is also, uh, this is also the combined enrollment status cannot exceed full time for a single term. This is probably where you're really from familiar with seeing these students. Um, and so let's take a look at this student. Again, they've been awarded the same thing at both places. Let's say in this case, you're like, ooh, yeah, nope, that's our bad. They're not actually attending here. We just forgot to delete it. You can just go into the student record, blank out the enrollment, click update student, and that will get rid of the edits you have for that student. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay, now we just have test seven, test 35. It's very like robotic names, aren't they today? <laughs> um, in this case, you've talked to Happy Town. You know the students attending, they've been attending, you've awarded them bridge. Um, and maybe just it's fall term and Happy Town hasn't gotten to it yet. You talked with them and so you're gonna override this student. So you see a couple different options. This is if a student is duly enrolled. 
So the student can be enrolled in both universities at the same time. However, the cost of attendance has to be adjusted at one of the schools. And so one of the schools can use the full-time cost of attendance, while the other can only use tuition and books only for determining financial aid. So if that was the case, you know, if they, they're both going to Happy Town, they're eligible, we're going to use my college paid on adjusted COA. ahead and override those. Oh, <laughs> see, here you go. This is a good example of making sure you click the override button <laughs> so that it saves. So go ahead and override that. And go ahead and override that. Likely what you all are going to see though, is that you check with the university, you know that they are not receiving aid there. And so you can go ahead and do the regular override, which is basically my college verified with the other college that they're not attending. Uh, so look, we're already down to 10 edits. Um, so let's go back to the total bridge grant award exceeds yearly max. So this is, again, this is the one that we just talked about where they're attending both schools and we're going to do, we're going to say my college verified with other college. It's not enrolled. In this case, we're going to say, oh, actually, you know what? They can't receive more than $500 a year in bridge. So let's take a look at the student. Okay, in this case, we're going to say, you know what? Yes, they can't. We're going to update student. But we could also write in an explanation. So we could say, my college awarded based on adjusted COA. But in the bridge case, uh, oh, Gabby, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, no, go ahead and finish what you're doing okay. on this one. And then... I was just going to say, in the bridge case, they really only can receive $500 a year, no matter if they're duly enrolled or not. So um, we would want to cancel that. So let's see. I did that. We'll refresh here. All right, Gabby, what, what question do you have for me? All right, Elizabeth was wondering why sometimes she has done overrides. She's mm -hmm. used the override option before for students whom she's confirmed with the other school that they're not attending, mm. but their um, her overrides were rejected by WASAC. Um, was that because the other school needed to update their records? Great question, Elizabeth, and thank you for jogging my memory. Uh, because sometimes this happens because the other school has already requested payment for the student. So when we get your override, we're looking between the two schools. We're looking who requested payment already for the student. And if a school has requested payment already, then they are going to be able to be the ones that keep the payment over the other school that submitted the override. Um, and so this is kind of where where it's a little tricky in the way that the schools need to coordinate because what would need to happen is the other school needs to delete the records out of Seesaw um, and then we can go ahead and accept your override. Uh, so that might be part of the coordination part. And if you ever need contact information, we're always helpful or we're always happy to, to provide contact information for schools um, if you need to help like, getting in touch with someone. Let me know if you have any follow-ups about that. <laughs> happy to help. So we'll move on to our student is not, CBS student is not okay to pay. So in this case, we know um, that the student doesn't have a record, but if you wanted to, you could look at the eligibility checker. We've linked it here for you. Um, and this is what you're gonna see in the case of this student because they don't have a record. Um, if they did have, have a record, this is where you're gonna be able to see all of their information as well as perform any overrides for the student. Uh, so this is a really good, and helpful tool uh, in determining college bound eligibility. Um, but for these students, we know that they're not eligible. So we're gonna go ahead and click on delete CBS award. All right, moving on, we're so close everyone. Uh, total WCG awards for year cannot exceed $2 maximum. So let's see what's going on. Um, what this edit is telling you is that at the annual amount uh, as determined by Seesaw, uh, is over awarded. And so you're gonna wanna look at the student detail to see what's going on here. Why, why does Seesaw think they're over awarded? So I know there's been times that I've been in here where I'm like, this is weird, their amounts seem right. 
Um, but it's usually clue to me that they're over awarded one, you can see what they should have been awarded here. But two, it looks like this student's been awarded based off of 65% MFI, but they're actually a 75% MFI. Um, and so there's a couple different things that could be at play here. The first thing is, is that the student can be completely awarded correctly, but for some reason your file didn't grab the latest income information. So it could be that you performed a pre PJ for the student uh, and, and for some reason that didn't get carried through through your file. So all you would need to do is click on this edit button right here and you could adjust the income to the PJ amount. So say that was like 25,000 in this case, click update student and you'll see their MFI change here. Also in this case, the student is not quite awarded <laughs> how they should be. Um, let's go ahead and refresh here and see what the edits still are. Okay, looks like the student's getting the bridge grant eligible but not awarded. Uh, so this is really good and helpful to know, but say for example, it really is that the student was just not awarded according to their MFI. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them back at, um, oh shoot. I think they're at like 43,000. Let me get it back to that 75% here. All right, here we go. So in this case, we wanna make sure that we're adjusting each record to what the maximum amount is for that student. Um, the hard part is, the hardest part is just remembering what it needs to be. <laughs> so we'll go ahead in here. I know this was uh, 58 dollars. This one is gonna be 115. 115 and 231. Okay, so now let's check my memory if I can remember that. <laughs> so 115. All right, I did it correctly. So you can always double check to here, check your max award, make sure everything's looking correct. You didn't do any typos. That's a great way to double check, but as you can see, all edits have been removed for this student. Um, based on correcting to their MFI. So let's refresh here, go back into this edit, take a look at this student. All right, so it looks like everything's looking good for fall and winter. For some reason we thought, you know, the student needed to do a bonus here. <laughs> so we're like, oh no, I put in the wrong amount for that student. Um, and it looks like they're hundred percent MFI. So we just needed to change this to 94. Um, but say you're a school that offers, you know, applied baccalaure uh, baccalaureates, you want to, or applied, applied bachelors, sorry, <laughs> afternoon, y'all, I'm doing my best. Say you have an applied bachelors program, you, and, and they started, you know, in spring, you would want to make sure this box is checked so that Seesaw could recognize their expanded eligibility. So when we update this student, let's see what they would get if they are in that. Well, in this case, Seesaw is saying, nope, this is broken. You're not a school that offers this. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and change it. But what happens sometimes is that um, either the box is not checked or the box is checked. So that causes edit issues. If a student was awarded based off of not being in the bachelor's program, it'll Seesaw will give you an edit because they'll say they're not awarded um, enough or you know, vice versa. So basically you just wanna make sure that these are correct. And that's a that's a hint if you're seeing you know a wrong award type edit um, to take a look and see if maybe a box was checked that wasn't supposed to, or a box should be checked that should be. So this student is good to go. I'm gonna get rid of my mini tabs that are happening here. I don't know if you were like me and you have all of these tabs open also in your brain. But as we see here, we have accomplished the edits. And I see Gavi has a question. I'm full of questions today. All right. Love it. Okay. So going off of the questions in the Q&A, uh, we have Kimberly and Elizabeth. Um, we're both asking if they could get a list of the other financial aid folks at other schools who do the interim so that they know who to contact. Mm-hmm. And what I wanted to throw out there for you is that we don't currently have a good list of mm -hmm. who does interim at each of the campuses. That's As correct. you know, there's been a lot of turnover and it's very hard for us to um, keep track of who's working on interim. So uh, at this point, we could send you a list of all of the directors, the current directors that we know of. Um, if anybody's changed directors, 
we in it's not on the list we haven't heard about it yet so mm -hmm. carly can uh, maybe we can send that out um and then we could go back to all the schools and ask for them to submit us who their interim mm -hmm. uh, person is uh, that would take us longer to get through uh, but that is a possibility and we could get that for you uh, there's one suggestion i did want to give if carly if you're able to find Mm -hmm. Somebody who was uh, duly enrolled. Don't mm. know, good, real quickly. But if you, you know, if you're doing your interim and you're trying to figure out something, um, what I've told people is to to try to look at one of the awards and see who's the name tagged on that at the okay. other school, and then that would give you um, the name of the person who did the awarding. So that would be a good person to contact. Yeah, let me see. I know I was trying to remember who was falling in that category, <laughs> but I don't remember. Shoot. Well, hey, afterwards, if we do have someone. Um, or if you could just pull up any of the students, you should. Yeah. It, do you have anybody that looks like they were paid? In your test file. Or you could do it after you show them how you they've been paid. Yep. Let's do that. Um, let's do that. So. One thing to know too, um, is, and I think I didn't mention this, but I want to, um, so we do have the WCGC eligible students, and this is a great moment just to remember that you should be checking for your WCGC eligible students. Um, again, this is the Washington College Grant Connect uh, program, which means that certain agencies uh, or programs that students are in qualify them for income <laughs> purposes to be eligible for Washington College Grant. So, and for bridge, um, for maximum Washington College Grant. So what that means is, one, these students don't have to complete a financial aid application to receive their funding. Uh, and two, um, <laughs> you can you can find them in um, under programs in Washington, you know, uh, I think we have a WCGC Connect listed here. Let me just make sure. Yeah, WCGC Connect. Um, when you're looking at these students in Seesaw, if a student was in um, Washington College Grant Connect, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up a student's record. And they would have their information listed here. They would, they would say they were eligible. Um, and so this would be helpful too if you're getting one of the WCGC edits that are like the student needs to receive maximum college grant. And so you're looking over here and they did an aid application and they had 100% um, listed in their MFI. It doesn't matter what their aid application says, they still are eligible for the maximum Washington College grant. And Seesaw has, was built to, you know, recognize this. Um, so if you award the maximum college grant, it's not going to say, you know, too much for the MFI or, you know, whatever the actual edit is. Um, it will actually recognize that they're an eligible student through that program. So something to know when you're looking at these students. But yeah, let's go through rec the request funds. So remember how I said, you know, we're walking through the tab. So we did our upload. We've resolved all the edits. Let's go to request funds. So easiest way is to do choose all students by term program. Uh, and we'll say we're going to be in spring quarter here. So we're going to our term, I should say, <laughs> it could be semester um, or clock hours. So a couple ways to do this, right? Uh, if you want to select all terms, all programs, click that box. Voila, easy. Uh, if you wanted to say we were only in the winter interim, you would want to do the current term and anything before that, make sure that you request. And this is a piece that you want to do before you submit the interim report. So you want to make sure you're requesting all funds. Uh, and if that requires some coordination with your finance office, make sure you're talking with them. They're doing the process um, and then submit your report. So we're going to say that, you know, we want to do all terms, all programs. So we're going to select this. Want to point out a couple of features here. Um, by term, you can download a CSV, which will give you the student's name, SSN, their enrollment and amount. Um, we've added these boxes here for you in case you want to have some of that reporting um, and you're looking to find that per term. Also, you can verify your selection. So you're seeing here exactly who's going to get paid based off of your request. Uh, just also want to mention, if you do have a negative amount here, still process your funds request. 
Um, and this is also an important reminder that you don't have to send a check to WASAC even if you requested a negative amount. Uh, we only we reconcile all of that during the final interim period. And so you will notice when you're doing the final interim, if you do happen to owe WASAC, we'll give you all that information, how to return funds to us um, and provide it then. But don't worry about sending uh, a check for any negative payment requests to us. Um, we're tracking that and we will definitely let you know if we need anything when the year ends. And the reason why we do this is because things fluctuate throughout the year. So you have new students coming in spring, you might have a positive payment request to offset that negative request. Um, there's a lot of change that occurs throughout the year. So um, to prevent you having to do extra work and provide us checks as turn on a term by term basis, we just reconcile this all at the end. So just a note about that. So we're gonna scroll down here. We like everything, we've looked at it, looks good. Click, I agree, request funds. All right, so everything went through. You should have received an email notification that tells you, hey, you've requested this, gives you a little summary. Um, also, again, just wanna point out the CSV feature. If you wanted to, to do, um, a, you know, download information for the entire fund re request, you can do that here. Um, sometimes helpful for the finance departments if they're reconciling students. All right, we've done this. We're moving to the interim report. So we're in spring. This is what I would anticipate seeing. So we have um, the submit interim report button. But of course, what we want to do is we want to review what we have here. So we see that we have the pending payments here. We're all squared away with WASAC. Everything's been... Uh, been requested that has been reported. And this is also a reminder to be doing that on a monthly basis. So you don't have to wait for the interim to request funds. Go ahead and do that throughout the year. We suggest on at least a monthly basis to do that if you have funds to request. Uh, again, down here, you're, in, you're going to see student uh, totals for the funds. Um, in this case, you know, there's no CBS or PTC students, but we have Washington College Grant and Bridge students. You can go down the line here to look at different things for your report. So this is a good example here where you're looking and you're like, okay, last year we, you know, we had about 254,000 total and this year we only have 59,000 total. Maybe there's something wrong here with my report. <laughs> this is a good uh, check for you to say, hey, did I remember everybody on this list? Did I actually accidentally do a partial list? or did I do something weird in my file upload? Good good place to check there. Um, likewise for other things. So you can see here, oh, we used to have, you know, quite a few stu students for C with CBS, but there's no one this year. Uh-oh, might need to take a look at something. Likewise with the head count. So we see here, oh, wow, we had 122 students, but we're only reporting 27. I think I missed some students. <laughs> um, so it's a good place to check here. And then if you have any receivables, there's um, the institution of bill status students that'll be listed here. Go back to submit. And let's just say in this case, there's a drastic reduction in student population. And we're like, yep, no, this is right. Dang it, it is right. <laughs> and we're ready to submit our report. We're gonna go ahead and submit the interim report. You can see here that it's verified for you that it's been submitted. Uh, you can see the expenditure summary. You're also going to get an email and we will also get an email. So once we know that you've submitted your report, we'll be reviewing it. And if there's anything else that we need you to do, maybe there's an override that doesn't make sense to us, that's when I'll email you and let you know. Uh, and, and like I said, please feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Um, let's see, for students, Bobby reminded me what we wanted to look at. We wanted to look at dual enrolled. Is that what we were thinking? Once you've requested a payment, you can see here um, that your, your award history and your payment history is going to be reflected right here too. So if you're ever curious where a payment status is at, it's gonna be listed here. And that's in this little like time wheel or clock wheel. <laughs> I don't know what we wanna call it. Um, so there's a record of your payment requests, record of any adjustments. So say you, you know, change an award, that will be reflected here. So we'll pretend that, you know, we needed to change, oops. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. You can't until we finalize your report. <laughs> so glad to see what you actually see here. Once you finalize your interim report, you can make those changes. 
I don't think there's anything else I wanted to show you besides, you know, your account status is always here. You can look in, up your payment requests um, in this tab. But really, when you're working the interim report, you're going to be going from step one all the way to step four here um, to get that submitted, of course, with the most time being spent in the edits portion. So let me go ahead and change my screen here real quick, and we'll go ahead and keep putting any questions that you have in the chat um, so we can make sure to address those. So let's see here. All right. So screen share. Okay, I think it's up now. Perfect. So just a couple of reminders about the interim report in general. So like I said before, request all payments before submitting your report um, for the current term that you're in and reporting and prior any prior terms. Uh, pay close attention to the due date and start early. So for example, we're going to be sending you the interim is open on April 8th. Don't wait till the due date to start trying to do your report. It can be so much work. Um, and even if you just handle it a little bit out of, at a time, fully recognizing that you all are going through a lot this year. So I just want to tell you, you know, we know that there's so much going on in your world and, and just really, really uh, want to do anything we can to make things easier for you. Um, the reason why the due dates are really important are for tight turnaround times when it comes to um, data that the Caseload Forecast Council needs. This is used for cost modeling and is really important to the legislator, uh, le sorry, legislature uh, for anticipated costs. So really, really important that we continue to receive the funding we need for various programs. Um, and this reporting helps us do that. So we appreciate your partnership with that. And most of all, ask questions. There's no dumb question. No question should be just sitting resonating with you. Just left there. Please contact us. If you don't understand something, reach out. We're here for you. I'm happy to get on a call with you. We can get on a Teams meeting, walk through the process. Um, if, if something's not making sense, we can work on that together. Uh, you can email the WCG email if you have any questions. I'm likely on the other side of that email and be happy to respond to you. If not, one of my wonderful teammates will do that as well. So I know we're getting close to time here. And again, I just really appreciate you so much and, and for taking the time during this afternoon to sit with us and walk through this process. I want, just wanted to give a moment to see if there's any last questions before we get going. I don't think I see anything in Q&A. Okay, you all, well, I just wanna thank you so much um, just from the bottom of my heart for the work that you're doing, how you show our Washingtonian students so much support, uh, especially during a really difficult time. And please just know that we're here to be a resource. We're here to assist you. And we really appreciate the time that you take to do this reporting so it can make a difference for students to be funded in our state. So thank you for your time today and just have a wonderful rest of your day.